Hi you guys, how are you? My name is Emmanuel King and I am going to teach you how to act on TV. And to get even more specific, I'm going to teach you how to act in commercials, television, feature films, and print campaigns. Now, you may be wondering, how are you going to teach us how to do that? One is because I've done it myself. Now, not only have I done it myself, I am a talent manager who has been able to get my clients working in commercials, television, feature films, and in print campaigns nationwide and even globally. And there is a lot of different ways that you can go about your career, but I wanna just give you some specific details and I gotta sort of go quick. Um, we do have the video coaching program, which I will talk to you guys about at any given point. If you get the information that you want and you have to run from this coaching right now, then you can always go to www.talentagencyguide Dot com. Once again, that's www.talentagencyguide.com and you can order the video coaching program where I'm going to go into detail about all of this. And just to give you a short preview, we will be talking about what is pilot season. We will talk about how to put your submission package together. We will talk about how to find the reputable talent agencies that you want to sign with, signatory sag after and ATA talent agencies. We'll talk about contracts. We'll talk about the difference of the commercial side of the industry versus the theatrical side of the industry. We'll talk about who are the top headshot photographers in the Los Angeles market. And the reason why we always want to deal with the Los Angeles market is because that is the hub. Everything else spirals out from what is happening in LA. But if you can get the principles on how people come to Hollywood and actually get signed and get on TV, then you'll be able to, in other markets like Atlanta, New York, Chicago, be able to duplicate the same process in your market, unless you want to yourself come to Hollywood to pursue your dream. So let's get into it. And the video coaching program, like I said, will have more time because each one of those topics we spend at least an hour, sometimes 30 minutes, sometimes uh, 45 minutes on a particular subject. So we're able to sort of hash it out. But for now, let's just give you an overview of what the entertainment industry is in case you have no clue whatsoever um, what is a commercial agent? What is a theatrical agent? Does a theatrical agent mean TV and film or does it mean theater performance? So let's get into sort of all of that. The first thing that you want to understand is we'll draw this guy right here, okay? Um, if you're an actress, then you can picture this person with long hair or however your hair is, right? and we're gonna draw a box around it, okay? Now, most people, that is a star, okay? When you think of Hollywood, you think of Los Angeles, what do you think? You think of all the stars, right? And walking down Hollywood Boulevard and all the celebrities, they have their star right there on the ground. So most people, when they wanna pursue acting, that's the image that they have in their mind. But that is not what gets you on TV. It's not your desire that you want to act. So first of all, the thing that you have to do is you have to begin to reverse engineer. So if celebrities and all the individuals that you know who are actually in movies and who are acting on TV, what did they do or what are they that most people aren't? Let me tell you. They are a part of something called the union called sag after they are union members so if you're not a union member then right away there is a difference between you and that individual so everything that we do in the industry i want you to keep in your mind 
that eventually you are going to want to become SAG-AFTRA, okay? And there's several ways to become SAG-AFTRA, which we'll talk about. But let me say this one more time. Once again, any celebrity that you can think of that you admire, from Julia Roberts to Matt Damon, Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, Sama Hayek, 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 you get the point. <laughs> ben Affleck, Holly Berry, Denzel Washington, Will Smith, they're all members of SAG-AFTRA. So, three ways to get into SAG-AFTRA. One is you can get three vouchers doing extra work, okay? So, for instance, if this was a scene and me and you are talking, okay? And we're talking, we're just friends and we're in a scene. So it's pretty boring because it's just me and you and our conversation. Now, all of a sudden, if we're having this conversation, let's say we're having it in an office building with a window. Now, if you're watching and all of a sudden you see two people pass um, in the back of the window, now it seems more dynamic. Now it seems like real life because there's movement happening. Well, those people who are walking behind the window are extras. So let's say that the director says, you know what? That person who's outside the window, I love their hairstyle. Let's actually use them as an assistant. So I want them to come in the scene. So now the production is using you differently than how they intended to use you. That could be one way that you can get a voucher. Another way is let's say you're on a war movie and there is a lot of loud noise or you're working at 2 a.m. and it's ridiculous weather outside. That can be means of them giving you vouchers. And we're not gonna go into all the ways to get vouchers because each production has its own sort of method on who they'll give vouchers out to. But if you were to get three vouchers, then you can become SAG eligible. So that is one of the ways. And honestly, a lot of people have become a part of the union doing that. The problem is with the three vouchers is some people can start doing extra work and within a month, let's say they work on one show and that show decides to use them as a stand-in, meaning that um, whenever the main actor is off um, eating or taking a break, or if they're setting up a new shot, they don't want the main actor to just stand around. So then they're going to bring an extra in literally just to be that person standing so that they can set up the lights and they can set up the frame of the shot without having to have the star just sitting there wasting time standing up. They can be working on their lines. They can be relaxed, getting makeup and wardrobe. So whatever, that's what a stand in is. Okay. Now let's say that show decides, Hey, we really like you. Let's use you for the next four episodes. In each episode, they gave you a voucher. Now, literally, within that four days of shooting, you have become SAG eligible. Now, SAG eligible means that you can still do non-union work and you can do SAG after work. The reason why this is important is because once you're a SAG member, you are not legally allowed to do non-union work. Okay, and we'll get a little bit more into that. But that's one of the ways. All right, another way, and this is how I became SAG, is you can book a SAG job. Book, SAG, job. Okay, now the percentage that you'll book a SAG television show and then get Taft Hartley into the union, Taft Hartley means that the production is, you know, paying for you to become SAG. It's could happen, there's always a percentage, so I never wanna say it's impossible, but the likelihood, if you were to look at the percentages, that usually doesn't happen. And the reason is, is it costs the production money, right? A penalty fee if they were to use a non-union actor instead of a sag after actor or actress if it's a sag after project, right? So if it's a union project then, and the production says, oh, we wanna use this non-union person, well, they have to pay a fee. And usually that fee is just as much as it would be to hire a sag after actor and actress, and there's many of them. So usually they would go with it. 
Now, every now and then, that actor or actress has like a very specific look that they need and they haven't been able to find a union member with it or their skill level is just perfect for the role and they go ahead and they use that individual. I have a couple of friends that have gone the way of booking straight into TV, but like I said, I've been in the acting game pretty much my whole life and I've only seen that happen about three times, okay? And I'm saying, I, like I know thousands of actors. Now, another way is to book still a SAG job, but it's not TV work, right? It would be a national commercial. And this is how I got into the union. Now, because commercials are very specific to marketing. So let's say if McDonald's all of a sudden decided, hey, we want to market to people that look like me, me, right? <laughs> Which I've done a McDonald's national, so that has happened. So if they say that, then they are willing to pay whatever fee that it's gonna cost to get me because they know that it's going to turn around and put money back into their pocket. So it's more likely that a national commercial will Taft-Hartley a non-union talent if that individual has the look that they want because it's all about them marketing. And of course, if they're gonna spend you know, thousands of dollars to put a commercial on air, then they're not gonna stop just because they gotta pay an extra couple of thousand to not use this individual because they're non-union. So it's very often, I've seen it a lot, I've seen it with me, I've seen it with my buddies, where the way that we were able to get into the union were we booked a SAG national commercial, okay? Now, another way, and this sort of just started, well, now it's been a few years, but for the longest time, you could not just pay your way into the union, and they have changed it. So you can now actually go up to the SAG building, um, and you can literally pay, right now the fee is over 3,000, Right, so it's a good little chunk of change, but you can pay yourself into the union. This though is not the smartest move if you're starting off, why? Because once again, remember I told you, if you are a union member, then you're not legally allowed to do non-union work. But when you're starting off your acting career, that's how you build your resume. That is how you build your demo reel. That is how you get put into non-union projects and you get roles so that you can get footage of yourself so that you can give that to a TV and film agent to want to rep you. But if all of a sudden you're starting off and you pay your way into SAG, now you're a professional actor or professional actress, but you cannot compete yet against the actual SAG after members who have spent years of building their resume. So then you sort of, uh, put yourself in a very bad situation. Now, there are certain situations, like for instance, let's say there was a SAG project that you knew about, and they said, well, we would hire you, but you're not SAG. Well, in that sense, then you can go join the union because you already have a promise of work, and if that project is big enough, then it may be worth it. But if not, you want to go the route of being at least SAG eligible so that you can do non-union work and you're still open to be able to do union jobs, but you're able to build, 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 build. And then as soon as you become a must join, then that's when you want to go ahead and then become a member of the union. We'll get more into that in the video coaching program, which all of you should get because this is just the tip of the iceberg. All right, so you can pay your way in. Now let's keep going, okay? So remember I said that most people, when they think about working on TV, acting on TV, right? And they think about the celebrities. And so most people, when they come to Hollywood, that's what they wanna do. But let me explain to you how the industry actually works. So, you have two sides. One, you have the theatrical side. Theatrical side. 
okay? And over here, you have the commercial side. Very important to understand that. So, agencies usually, especially if you're dealing with a signatory agency, which are all the legit agencies, that means that they are either sag after or ATA. Once again, we get more into depth in the video coaching program, which you should get. But just so that you can somewhat get it, basically think about the union, right? The union is to protect actors and actresses, right? They're the ones that make sure that people can't overwork you. People can't underpay you. So sag after also has contracts with these agencies to where agencies have to follow certain protocols which protect actors and actresses. So one thing to always, always, always remember, if you're going to sign with an agency, you wanna make sure that they are either sag after or, and let me just, write this somewhere just so you can also get it or ata and i'm not going to go into the difference of sag after an ata right here in this uh, particular video we do it in the video coaching program but enough um for you to understand is just the fact that if you meet with someone and they say hey i'm an agent and i want to rep you if they're not sag after or they're not ata thank them and keep on going, okay? You wanna always, always stay in the actual league, okay? This is why I'm drawing this out for you because if it's not in this, then it's not in the actual game, okay? I am a professional talent manager. I have actors and actresses on TV currently. So I'm telling you what's actually happening right now. Okay, my name is Emmanuel King and my um, company is Tag Talent Management. Now, here we have um, theatrical, okay? Let's go theatrical agent. Well, we'll say theatrical agency, we'll say commercial agency. All right. Now, what will allow you to get repped with the theatrical agency? Once again, a lot of people get confused because when I say theatrical, they think theater, right? They think Broadway. No, in Los Angeles, in all the major markets, theatrical agents are TV and film agents, okay? So a TV and film agent is not going to take you on their roster. No legit one, no top one, and that's where you wanna be. They're going to first ask you, do you have the right tools? What are those tools? Let's get into it. So, one of the main tools that you will eventually need to get signed at an agent that can help get you on TV is you will need a theatrical demo reel, okay? A demo reel is, let's say, a minute and 30 seconds of you actually acting on film, okay? So, obviously, the better the production of the project that you're on, the better your reel is going to be. And an agent is going to judge you off of your reel. So, I tell people all the time, if you don't have an amazing demo reel or one that really represents you well, it's not time to submit to the theatrical department of an agency because all you're going to do is shoot yourself in the foot. It's the same way that if you just pay your way into the union, but you have no credits, you're shooting yourself in the foot. Yes, you can say, I'm a SAG after member, but you don't have the resume behind you to actually back you up. So, another important thing that you're gonna need is your theatrical headshots. Now your headshots, which you're gonna soon see, is the most important out of all of the tools 
that you can have. And I'm going to go into it a little bit more. And we specially go into it in the video coaching program where we actually will give you the names of some of the top headshot photographers so that you can go and you can go on their website and you can research and you can see the images that actors and actresses who are on TV are using and you can compare that to the images that you may have of yourself and you'll be able to see the difference and the quality um, of headshots that you need for yourself. When you think of headshots, always think of business card because you as an actor or an actress, or if your child is the performer and you're a parent watching this, they are a business. You are a business. The actor is a business. You are marketing yourself, right? So the first people that you're marketing to are the agents. You want them to buy you. They want to buy and believe in your brand. So your headshot is your business card. I mean, imagine, or the sign on your building, right? If you're driving um, down the street, and someone says, oh, you should stop at the store. They have the best diamond necklaces and, and they're dirt cheap. But then you drive by the store and there's no sign, the lights are off. You're probably not going to trust that store. That's the same way. So if you're telling an agent or a professional rep or a casting director or a talent manager, hey, I'm an actor, I'm an actress, I should be on TV, but you can't show me a professional headshot, I'm not going to trust the fact that you know what you're doing. And this is probably one of the only industries where being green, which means being new, is not the cutest thing. You know, in a lot of professions, when you tell somebody that you're new, they're like, oh, that's so cute. Well, not in the inner entertainment industry because everyone's job is riding upon you doing a great job. I mean, just imagine if an agency puts their name on you, sends you out to a casting director and you suck, then that casting director is now going to think that that agent does not have good taste. So what do you think is going to happen over time? If this agency keeps pushing out people that aren't good, that casting director is no longer going to call upon that agent when they are looking for actors and actresses. That's how you have the different level of agencies because some agents who don't get this, they submit everybody to every project and then soon casting offices no longer look at their submissions. When you have some of the top agents, they're very specific. They make sure that all of their talent have all of the best tools. And so the casting directors now rely on these agents because casting directors, they need, right? They need actors. They need actresses because they're getting hired by production. They're getting hired by ad agencies to find those actors and actresses. So what does the casting director do? They go to the people, the agencies and the managers who have those actors and actresses, right? So rapport and taste are very, very important in this industry. Let's keep going. So demo reel and headshot, and obviously your resume. So I might as well just go ahead and put that. All right. And like I said, when you're starting, and I do say, like I said a lot, um, because I, I say this all the time, I'm meeting actors and actresses all day, almost every day, and always trying to give them the best information that will basically streamline them and help them not make the same mistakes that I made in my career that took me years of learning through experience. Uh, it's also the reason why I've been able to grow my management company so quick is because my talent didn't have to spend the same years that I spent trying to figure all this stuff out. See, I spent years in this industry. That's why I know this like the back of my hand. So my clients, they benefit because all they have to do is listen to my stories and then follow a specific straight line. And that's how they've been able to make it and act on TV. Okay. So let's go ahead and skip over here. Now, once again, you need tools. Okay. What are the tools here? Well, the only difference really about these tools from the theatrical side of an agency to the commercial side is the demo reel. Now you do have a reel here and that can be 
for instance, let's say you're 23 years old and you played football your whole life and you have actual footage of you as a running back doing circles or you are a cheerleader and you have footage of you actually cheerleading and dancing. Well, for a commercial agent, if you tell them that, well, one of my attributes is the fact that I'm a cheerleader, it's one thing to tell somebody, but if you can visually show them, then it becomes more powerful. So we get more into this, but this is a tool that you can use. It's not mandatory. So I've gotten many of actors and actresses without any type of footage signed at some of the top talent agencies. And when I say top talent agencies, let me just go into this real quick. You have, let's say, A-level agencies, which are CAA, William Morris, UTA, APA. These, Gersh, these are agencies that you don't really just submit to. These are the top agencies. Most of these agencies are the ones that house Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, Will Smith, Leonardo DiCaprio, Jack Nicholson. So these agencies usually take you from lower level agencies once you've already proven that you can make money. And we'll get into contracts and how that happens in the video coaching program. But just so that you can know, those are the top, top agencies. So I like to just say A agencies and we put them off to the side. Not to say that you can't get with them, but understand that the process of submitting, usually with those top agencies, it's upon referral or they go and they find people who are on TV and then once their contract is up, then they get them to sign. And then it's easy for them because they can say, hey, you wanna stay with your agency who has all people around the level that you have it or do you wanna come over here where we have Matthew McConaughey, right? Where we have Daniel Day-Lewis. And of course, most people are gonna say, oh, I wanna go where the celebrities are. And so you have your A agencies. Then you have your B-level agencies and I'm just gonna name off a few just so if you have no clue to what agencies are and just so it's in your subliminal mind. So you have agencies like Abrams, Butch Wald, Daniel Hoff, Maverick, Media Artist Group, uh, Sovereign Talent, Aqua Talent, CESD, Coast to Coast, Ah, I sort of want to say, oh, I'll say Lemon Lime Agency. Agencies like that. And the reason why I throw in Lemon Lime Agency is there's an agent named Robin who um, I sort of owe a lot of my career to because I don't even know if she fully remembers this, but there was a time in my career where I didn't know exactly what a headshot was. And she was the first person that sort of showed me what that was. She basically coached me a little on what the tools were. And then once I found out the tools, I was able to go and really research and then go get signed with one of the top agencies. And then within a few months, I was on my first national commercial. So. Um, so I like to always throw in uh, Lemon Lime, even though they are um, more of a bot bot boutique, so they're more like, I would say, lower B level, but they are still in that category of agencies. And there's about, I would say, 30 to, uh, let's just say there's about 30 B level agents, and then you have your C level agents, which these agencies are good, they just don't have the same relationships that the B-level agencies have. And then you have your D-level agencies. And when I say D-level, it's like they're signatory, meaning they just became sag but they don't have any relationships. And then your F-level agencies are all the agencies that are not a part of sag or ATA. Okay. And in the video coaching program, we actually go through all of the agencies and I, we name off about like 130 agencies and show you sort of who they rep and all of that. That's in the video coaching program. Once again, if you do have to run out and you want to purchase the video coaching program right away, you can go to www.talentagencyguide.com. Once again, that's www.talentagencyguide.com 
www.ebaymartinsonmarketing.com. When you're doing your submission package, the first thing an agent is ever going to see before they see your resume, before they see your cover letter, the first thing is they are going to see your 8x10 headshot if the submission is coming through the mail. And in the video coaching program, we talk to you about the difference of submitting to some agencies be, um, through the mail because that's how some accept it. Some have online submissions and others, there's other ways, certain emails, uh, situations. The thing is you don't want to submit to an agent the wrong way. But let's say that there is an agency that's accepting uh, online submissions. Well, still, you're going to have to put a JPEG, right? A digital form of your headshot. So if it's in the mail, it's eight by 10. If it's through an email or online, it's still gonna be a digital headshot. Either way, they're both headshots. Now your commercial headshots are different from theatrical headshots. When you think of commercials, you're thinking of sales, right? So in commercials, you notice everyone's happy, they're selling, because you're selling a product. So you would never see anyone sad because that's not gonna get you to wanna buy anything, right? Unless it's a spoof and it's like on the Super Bowl commercial and they're doing it as like a joke. But besides that, you're, and if you don't believe me, just go to any, watch TV, <laughs> that's it. Or even go to YouTube and just wait for the ad to pop up and see what the commercial is. You're not gonna see sad crying people. So your commercial headshots are gonna be bright. They're gonna be colorful. They're not going to be, you know, you looking serious. Where theatrical is different, why? Because in a theatrical, you could be playing a drug addict. You could be playing a very serious uh, cop. Right? So these aren't going to call for you to be smiling and happy. But if you're playing the banker over here or you have a headshot showing that you're a business professional, you're not going to be serious and mean. It's most likely going to be a smile. It's going to be a smirk. It's going to be something that's more upbeat. Okay? And in the video coaching program, which I'll continue to talk about, we go into the depths of that and then we're able to actually show you imagery so you can get a better understanding of it. Okay, so another tool here, where is, oh, here we go, is code read. Okay, so code reading is very important and I'll say about 85% of the top agencies are all going to make you code read because when you meet with an agency in the meeting, this is not like back in the day where they come and they'll see your play or you're, they're going to ask you to do a monologue. No, they're going to ask you to do a commercial code read. What is a commercial code read? Commercial code read is going to be about a paragraph of something that you would see on a commercial. Okay, so for instance, like a copy would be like, do you remember when you were young and the words calories and fat grams didn't even exist in your vocabulary? Well, Taco Bell has a brand new menu. It's called Border Lights. It means you can eat whatever you want, whenever you want for half the calories and half the fat. Now, I don't know about you, but as I'm getting older and my metabolism slowing down, I'm definitely going to Taco Bell. It'll be something like that, right? It'll be a McDonald's, um, commercial, it'll be a Best Buy, whatever is going to be about a paragraph. And as soon as you come in, they're going to give you the copy and you'll have about seven minutes to, to 10 minutes uh, to sort of memorize that the best that you can. And then they're going to bring you into a room and either put you on camera where you have to deliver that code read. And the reason why it's called a code read is because you don't have time really to memorize it, right? And so in the video coaching program, we teach you ways to be able to use the sides and still be able to deliver it even though you're not perfectly off book. Off book just means that you've memorized everything. Now, of course, if you were given commercial sides and then your audition was the next day and you have 12 hours to memorize, then yes, you're gonna be able to memorize your sides. But it does become sort of challenging when you're only given five minutes. And if you don't know what a code read is or you're not practicing that, then you don't wanna do all of this work to finally meet with an agent and then suck. And you could be the most brilliant actor and actress 
right? Let's say that you're coming from college where you had a full scholarship in theater, but you guys didn't work on commercial sides. It's a little bit different technique. And so in the video coaching program, we do teach you a little bit more about that. One thing that I can give you guys right away that you can work on to just even warm you up is you can grab any magazine and just begin to, um, to just I don't know, pull out a paper or you can write it down, but just write like seven sentences and then get yourself, give yourself 10 minutes and then get in front of your camera, even if you have a cell phone, get in front of your cell phone and then try to deliver those lines directly into camera the way that I did the Taco Bell um, code read, okay? And doo -doo -doo. let's keep going. Okay, so code read. There's one other thing that you need on this side. And that, now remember, if you don't have a demo reel, you are not submitting to a theatrical agency. Bam, no! So you're going to have to go the commercial route. Now this is sort of the loophole that we've known, and when I say we, I mean like myself, my friends, my talent, we have always known that this is the loophole. So if you don't have a demo reel, well commercials, they need everybody, right? Think about it. Let's say you are a 50-year-old African-American with dreads. Well, there's a Caucasian lady who is 29 year, years old and she has red hair. Well, if uh, a company wants to market to her, they're not going to use you. And if they want to market to you, they're probably not going to use her, right? They want <laughs> they want to um, market to people that will believe or see themselves using that product. So for commercials, they need everybody. They need all ages. They need all looks. They need all sizes because companies want to market to everybody. So it's more likely that you can get in with a commercial agent to begin with, but you still need the top tools. But if you have the top tools and let's say you're Japanese, and you're 30 and you go to an agency who doesn't have any Japanese people on their roster, there's more likely of a chance that they're gonna bring you in, right? Because they need when uh, Samsung or Nike says, hey, do you have any Japanese individuals on your roster and they don't have anybody, then that's money that's passing them. So commercial agents like to fill their roster with a little bit of everything. I sort of look at agents, and this is a way that you can sort of look at it, as imagine if they're selling like different cereals and the cereal brands are the actors and actresses. So if someone says, hey, we need some chocolate cereal, they're not gonna give you Frosting Flakes. They're gonna take you to Cocoa Puffs or, uh, it's, what's another one? Cocoa Crispy, right? <laughs> it's been so long since I've eaten cereal. But you get the point. So they need a variety of individuals. So commercials is the perfect way for any individual to start off their career. So. One other thing that you're gonna have to have is you're gonna have to have meeting skills. I might as well go ahead and put that over here as well because it's very, very important, okay? So what do you do in an actual agency meeting? Which a lot of people who are not signed, they don't know this, right? So in the video coaching program, we actually break it all down. Right here, I can't break it all down, but I will give you something, right? Just because you're here, I wanna give you some type of knowledge to begin working with. And I want you to think of this philosophy. Think about Disney, right? Think about, actually, think about Simba. Do you know the story of Simba, right? The Lion King? Well, if you don't, then let me just refresh you, right? So you have this, kid, lion, named Simba, who has the rightful ownership to become the king, right? And his father, Mufasa, is the king, and his father is trying to teach him of eventually how he will have to operate once he becomes king. So his whole life is pretty much going to be geared for him to become king. Now, let's fast forward. His uncle basically does some sneaky stuff, 
kills his father, blames it on Simba, um, has Simba believing that he killed his father, and out of fear, Simba runs away, right? So Simba pretty much, he puts his ability to become king on the back burner. He leaves his mom, he leaves his best friend Nala, and he goes off into the wilderness where he finds, right, Akuna Matata, uh, his two friends who wind up having him forget about his past. There's no reason to worry about your past when you can live in paradise here. So he does that and he grows up, right? Forgetting who he is. And then all of a sudden Nala, years later, comes out and she basically finds him. And she reminds him of who he is. And she tries to encourage him to go back and take his rightful ownership as the king. But because of the fear and the scaredness, he doesn't have the courage. And so, um, basically, to make a long story short, he has this you know, fantasy where Mufasa talks to him, and then all of a sudden he gets the courage to go back, he fights his uncle, beats his uncle, and he takes his rightful throne as king. So it's a story of an individual that loses everything because of fear and then has to come back and gain the courage to actually be who rightfully they are. Well, guess what? Don't you think that that story sounds familiar? Right? You yourself may have big goals and dreams. Or maybe you've been in a situation where you had an audition that meant so much. But because of the fear, you didn't allow yourself to perform at your best. Or there's some goals and some things that you want to do in your life that you're not giving yourself the opportunity because of fear. And all you need is the courage. So when you watch a story like The Lion King, that literally speaks to your heart. Now, there's other stories, right? Let's think about Aladdin. Let's think about uh, Little Mermaid. So the reason why these Disney stories are so powerful is because they're dealing with real life situations that a lot of humans are dealing with themselves. And so when they're watching this, they're seeing themselves in those characters. So that's how you want it to be when you're talking to the agent. You want to be able to tell your story and have it be compelling. You don't want it to be an interview where they're just asking you a question. Oh, well, uh, how long have you been acting? Uh, I, oh, well, have you done this? Uh, do you have this? No, you don't want it to be an interview where it's just yes, no, yes, no. You want to take that opportunity to be able to express yourself so that you can show your charisma. So you have to know your story. You have to know what got you into acting. When did you want to become an actor? What training have you done? What attributes do you do? Are you bilingual? Can you speak two languages? Are you a martial artist? right with a black belt where a lot of individuals don't have that so it now it becomes uh something that's uh, a quality that maybe this agency needs maybe you're an amazing singer so so through your you're telling your story you tell them that they can that you can sing then they say okay well sing me something and you're already prepared with the song so you're not sitting there um let me think what can i say no you can say oh okay I got one for you and then you're prepared. So basically, we want you to go into your meetings fully prepared to be able to shine bright like the star that you are, right? And if you're able to do that, you get signed and then you're one step closer to being able to act on TV, okay? Now, let's keep going. The reason why you're one step closer is because these agents, right? Professional reps like managers and agents, they have relationships with casting directors. Casting directors are the in-between person from the agent to the actual production. So, um, on this side, we have the studios. Studios. So when we're talking about the studios, like the main ones, right? Like ABC, Fox, CW, like these are the studios, okay? Uh, Universal. Now, over here, we have, let's say, um, ad agencies, ad agencies, and I sort of have to, you know what, actually, what we'll do 
is um because i don't want you well oh we have enough room okay hopefully you guys can see or zoom in if not i'll just you know speak it out but so you have the studios right and then you have the casting directors so the, a studio will find a th so let's say uh universal universal has a new television show and they need a high school basketball team so they need actors or actress depending on you know what type of team it is for that show well how are they going to find it they're going to hire a casting director whose job is to have relationships with these agencies okay now in the real world of how it works is there's a thing here called um breakdown express break down uh, take one second you guys to write this break down express so that is a platform of communication digitally that casting directors will put up a breakdown, right? So they'll put up, hey, we're looking for um, a 22-year-old actor who is six foot four inches. Uh, we're looking for all ethnicities, and they're gonna basically play the point guard of this basketball team. And then the theatrical agents, they go on Breakdown Express, and they're gonna see that, and then they're able to submit whoever's on their roster that they feel is right for that role. Now the actors portion of that is called actors access, okay? So now in the video coaching program, we walk you through all of this stuff. Uh, we show you how to get on these profiles, but just to give you some basic understanding and knowledge of how it works. Now, on Actors Access, you can see roles, but you don't get to see what the what um, the agents see. Okay, so a lot of like free projects, independent projects, projects that aren't paying that much money, student films. A lot of them will use Actors Access. It costs money for them to post on Breakdown Express. So on Breakdown Express, which only the actual agents and professional managers have access to. Um, they get to see some of the bigger projects, some of the studio projects, okay? Now, whatever you have as an actor on your Actors Access profile is what shows up on your theatrical agent's profile when they're trying to submit. So the photos that you have up on your Actors Access is the photos that your agent is able to use. So eventually, there's three um, basically profiles that you have to have if you're an actor or actress out here especially in los angeles and that is actors access and casting frontier and la casting which i'm going to show you on the commercial side there are websites like backstage um they're not the same so you can never have a backstage and be on and, and work on tv okay backstage does have a lot of money and so they do get some projects but they're they're also a good publication of telling you what's happening in the industry. But when we're talking about the official ones that each agent on the theatrical side is going to make sure that you have is Actors Access. On the commercial side, they're going to make sure that you have Casting Frontier and that you have LA Casting. Now, Casting Frontier, we'll put here, okay? So the same way. Now, Instead of the studios, here we have the ad agency. So let's say McDonald's, they hire an ad agency and they say, hey, we're looking for um, a light-skinned guy with a Superman shirt and a blue hat, <laughs> right? <laughs> so they're going to tell a casting director that. And this casting director who deals with commercial agencies right they're different from the theatrical casting directors but they're both casting directors so essentially they do the same thing it's just that they spend a majority of their time dealing with ad agencies and commercial agents where these people they spending most of their time with studios and theatrical agents so they're going to tell the casting director hey we got to find this person 
And then that person is going to put that on something called Casting Networks. Casting Networks. Networks. Casting Networks. Or they're going to put it on Casting Frontier. Now, the same way how Actors Access is the actors uh, portion of Breakdown Express, LA Casting right, or San Francisco casting, but LA Casting is the same um, on the Casting Network side. So Casting Networks is something that only the professional agents and managers get to see, but you have to have an LA Casting profile for your commercial agent to submit you on Casting Networks. Now Casting Frontier has their own separate uh, system, and there's only a few big casting offices that use Casting Frontier, but some of those casting offices are also some of the biggest casting offices, so you have to have one. Um, so once again, in the video coaching program, we're able to actually break down each and every one of them and really show you and explain, and it's a lot more uh, clear, but I wanna give you as much knowledge, free knowledge actually, right now that you're getting to be able to give you some type of understanding of the entertainment industry so you're not clueless, okay? Uh, like I said, I spent many years, this is what I do professionally, so I do this all day, every day, because I'm on these sites. I have to submit my talent on these sites, so that's why I understand it so well. Now, um, I wanna go into a few more, oh, be right because I was gonna erase it and I'll, I'll probably go into like one more thing um, and then you know if you guys want more information which there's a lot more to give you I want you guys to right away go and get the video coaching program which as soon as this video is over you'll have an opportunity to go ahead and grab it right away and then you have the leisure to watch the videos at your own pace. Some of you may want to binge watch for the next <laughs> two weeks, right? And, and then you can watch over and over and over and over and over to make sure that you understand all of this, where some of you may want to digest it a little slower. Well, with the video coaching program, it's up to you on how you want to take in the information. And once again, if you have to go, but you just want to go get this right now, you can go to www.talentagencyguide.com, go under video coaching program and go ahead and just um, purchase that video coaching program and let's get you acting on TV. Once again, that's www.talentagencyguide.com. Okay, biggest thing. Because now I, I think I'm just gonna give you as much free knowledge as I can before the video ends, okay? So, relationships are the biggest thing. Relationships, okay? Now, it's so big and so important in this industry that I'm gonna actually write it twice. All of this information that I'm giving you, this, when people are like, man, how do I get on TV and how, this is how you do it when you don't have any relationships. Now, of course, remember, I told you, you're not getting signed at a theatrical agent, a top theatrical agency without a demo reel. But imagine if um, your sister's husband is the theatrical agent at one of these top agencies. Well, that individual could put you on their roster without a demo reel, but that is relationship. So yes, there's always the percentage, if you have a relationship, which a majority of this business is ran off of, then those are the ways that you loophole. Like for instance, when I told you the secret that we've always known is if you don't have a demo reel or an extensive theatrical resume, 
then eventually you can still get over here. And the way is, is you get a commercial agent. You, meanwhile, right, you get your commercial headshots, the best that you can possibly get. You get in there, let's say you book a national commercial. Now you're making a lot of money. You book a couple of national commercials. Now you have a relationship, an actual relationship, right? In this industry, if you're not related to somebody, a real relationship comes with revenue. It does. When you're making an agency money, then now you're really gaining a relationship. So if you're making this agency a lot of money, then it's easy now that you have this relationship with your commercial agent to say, hey, you know, I've been working on my theatrical demo reel and I was wondering if you will refer me over to the theatrical side of the agency. It's easy for this agent who probably, you know, has an office right across the hall from the theatrical agent to literally go knock on the door and say, hey, one of our clients on the commercial side has been making a lot of money. They have a lot of charisma and they have a demo reel and would like to submit it over to you. I want to refer them over to you. See, that's how we were all able to get in when we didn't have a demo reel, right? Now, if you do have an amazing demo reel, then the way that you can submit is different. But if you don't, once again, if you're starting off, then you want to come this route. Now, oh my gosh, I almost didn't put this. This is so important! Craft. So I'm giving you guys game right now. I'm giving you inside game of the actual industry, but I'm teaching you the business. So I didn't even tell you, it, you better have some skills. <laughs> like, I hope you can actually act. Um, and if you can't and you need, uh, wherever you are, you can actually go to www.talentagencyguide.com and you can get um, one of the online classes that we have. If you're in the LA area, you can come to our production studio and you can train with us on camera, in person. So if you need actual like to work on your skills, uh, which all of you should be working on your skills, okay? You cannot be a professional in any industry and not be working on your craft. This is actually the most important, okay? I'm, I was giving this video and I wanted to really give you guys the business side because a lot of people don't know this. And so when I show people this, it's sort of like, oh my gosh, I, I didn't under, I didn't really know like, oh, that's what it is to go and act on TV. Yes, but you got to have craft. You have to, you got to be working on your skills. So if you're not in class uh, and you need a great place then once again, like I said, go to www.talentagencyguide.com. We have online Skype acting classes. We also have in-person if you're in the Los Angeles area, okay? Now, on the commercial side, the craft is, once again, code reading, commercial sides, okay? So you got code reading, but we'll, we'll just put more, let's just put commercial um, side. So commercial technique, commercial technique. So commercial technique um, is pretty much, for instance, let's say that we're in a commercial audition and they say, hey, it's you and somebody else and you guys are best friends, so you're improv -ing. so improv becomes very important. Improv is basically you're using your imagination to create a situation without having the actual sides or dialogue. So they'll say, hey, you and this person, you guys are best friends. I want you to improv a scene and you're at a uh, barbecue and your favorite football team is on and you guys are grilling and go ahead and start right then and there. So you guys both have to imagine this scenario and work together to make this seem believable. Now, if you've never had commercial training and the person is standing like this, then most likely you're gonna start talking to the individual and you're gonna say, hey man, yo, so did you see um, the touchdown? And the person is saying, oh no, I was in there and I was on the grill, right? So now the whole time you guys are talking back and forth, right? And what are you getting? You're just getting side profile. So that means you have not 
learned that in commercials, you're gonna cheat out. So even though I'm talking to this person right here who is facing this way, and in real time, it's gonna seem weird. They're not gonna wanna talk to me, right? Because in real life, you don't talk to someone right here like this. But for camera, you want to cheat open. So, hey, did you see the game? Right? So, or I can say like, yo, did you see what LeBron did? He was dunking on people. See, because now you can see me. You can see my face. You can see my expression versus if I'm standing like this and I'm like, yo, did you see the game? And you little techniques like this is what you learn in commercial acting. Okay, another thing that you learn is how to slate. So a lot of people, you know, when they come in and they say, oh, slate your name. Well, if you don't know what a slate is, you're gonna be looking like this, right? Or, or people say, oh, hi, I'm, I'm, I'm Emmanuel. They can see the nerves, right? Versus, so watch the difference of this. So someone comes in, Hi, uh, I'm Emmanuel King. You can tell that person is nervous. They don't have a smile on their face. They, like they, they look scared. They're scared of the camera. But then you have somebody that's, hey, hi, how are you guys? My name is Emmanuel King. Thank you for having me. Right? And they're just smiling and they're happy to be there. Thank you guys. Right away, <laughs> when the ad agency is looking at that camera and they see the difference of those two people, this is before the audition. Who do you think they're gonna gravitate towards? The person who's full of energy, full of charisma, full of excitement, because they're gonna think in their mind, oh, that person, they've done this before. If we go and we put them on set, where we're paying 100,000 for this commercial, that person's gonna show up. That other person, they may get on the set and piss on themselves, I don't know, and, 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 and not be able to actually perform. Hopefully that never happens to anybody, okay? That would be very, very, very bad. Okay, let's keep going. On the theatrical side, now you have um, scene study, okay? You still have to, you gotta have on-camera training. You have to because all of your auditions, they're gonna be on camera. Every now and then you'll come in and there won't, but for if you're going to the studio level, uh, even if you get a self-tape submission, it's all going to be on camera. So if you don't know um, how to work the camera, if you don't know that for TV and film, you should never look directly into camera, but you should always look right off when you're dealing with the reader. Because remember this, with commercials, you may be in a situation where you're presenting a product, right? So let's say I'm presenting to you guys right now the video coaching program and how we go into all of it. So I'm looking directly into camera because I'm speaking directly to you, okay? But if you were to go watch a movie and you seen the actors looking into the camera, it's gonna take you out of the movie. The only time you see it is if they're trying to um, do it on purpose, like on Deadpool, you know, every now and then they'll have like the person look directly to camera and talk to the audience, but it's because they're trying to get a joke or some type of laughter out of it. But if you're watching, you know, the Titanic or any other big movie, you don't see them looking into the camera talking to the audience. No, they want you to feel like you're a fly on the wall and you just happen to be amongst these people in their imaginary world, right? So that's the difference when, you know, on camera technique, you start learning how to master your feelings and how to convey yourself on camera. And so there's much more in terms of the craft in the video coaching program, we give you many exercises that you can work on, even by yourself at home, uh, different resources that you can have, um, a list of commercial sides, um, theatrical sides that you can work on. So if you don't have the video coaching program, get the video coaching program, okay? As soon as we're done with this video, 
get the video coaching program. Trust me, if you wanna act on TV, get it, okay? <laughs> Everything, all the things that I've been able to get my clients on TV, it's all in the video coaching program. All of this stuff, it's all spelled out, but more clearly in the video coaching program. All right, now, I'm gonna erase this. So hopefully that was very, very, very insightful for you guys, okay? Um, I look forward to you getting the video coaching program. Uh, we also have private coaching, which once you get the video coaching program, if you guys want a little bit more guidance and assistance um, from me personally, um, one of our head coaches, then you can go ahead and do the private coaching and you can find that on uh, www.talentagencyguide.com as well. The reason why I like to start people off, especially with the video coaching program, is because I'm telling you, a lot of the fundamentals that people aren't taught because I'm a professional in the industry, I'm able to give that to you so that you're no longer confused of how the industry works, okay? So if you don't have an agent, you wanna get the video coaching program because there I can really sort of spell out how you put your submission package together, how you get those submission packages to these agents, and how you can get signed, okay? I can tell you about all the different commercial casting offices, the theatrical casting offices, who are the casting directors, who are the casting associates, all of that stuff, all that knowledge is in the video coaching program, which is why you have to order it, okay? Do not go without getting this if you want to act on TV, but specifically commercials, television, feature films, and also be able to do print campaigns. All right, now, um, actually, before, let me just say one more time. If you do not have the video coaching program, I want you to get it, all right? Go to www.talentagencyguide.com or as soon as this presentation is over, click the button to be able to purchase the video coaching program. It will change your career. If you want to act on TV, this is all the knowledge that I myself have used and all my clients have used to work on television. 